Welcome to the Creative Community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is poet Mary Brown. Mary, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, I'm really happy to be here because we have your book, which I'll hold up to the camera, Call It Mist. You write under the name M.L. Brown, mm -hmm. um, but your friends all know you as Mary. <laughs> <Correct>. <laughs> so we're going to hear quite a few poems from, from Call It Mist. We're going we're gonna to finish up with some bean poems that you've been writing. So for people who are watching and want to make sure that they hang out, that they're spectacular, and who knew that beans could <laughs> merit such great work? So. Yes, a great source of inspiration. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about the, this collection, Call It Mist overall, how to come together. Um, it, it started really, <clears throat> I think, when, when I was in graduate school mm -hmm. in this is at, at Antioch, Los Angeles, in yeah. LA. Yes. And um, so a lot of the poems are from that period. And then I put the collection together probably three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, a little over three years ago, and have been sending it out for mm -hmm. three years and finally got. You won a contest. Uh, I won a contest, yeah. yes, with Three Mile Harbor Press. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's something I think a lot of people, as they get into the poetry world, don't realize how <laughs> difficult that is. <laughs> yeah. First of all, to you know, to get enough, <laughs> because typically um, a number of the poems in the book need to be published in literary magazines to sort of give it some heft before it goes out. And then there's the process of arranging things so that the book makes sense. Um, I don't know about you, but when I'm writing, I'm like a magpie. This interests me, and that interests <laughs> me, and that. And it's hard to make everything cohere. Did you have that yes, issue? Yes, yeah. absolutely, because I'm totally the same way, um, with the exception of a few things like right. beans. Right. <laughs> um, I do. I write about what is moving me or interesting me moment. or making me angry at, at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so... Although the book is in four different sections that, um, that to me make sense, they're really all about the same kinds of themes mm -hmm. that we, we all write poetry right. about, like relationships, childhood, mm -hmm. parentage, um, desire, mm -hmm. really, I think is really the bottom line right. in, in so many of my poems. Um, well, tell us about the, the title. The title comes from one of the poems. Right. It's as I said, it's in four sections, and it's bookended um, by erasures of words of their of their def their dictionary definition mm -hmm. of certain words that echo the theme. Mm -hmm. um, and so, call it mist comes from uh, an erasure of the word rain, and it just struck me as appropriate mm -hmm. for the umbrella title of, yeah. for all the poems. Yeah. And I can't wait to hear you read these erasure poems. They're, they're so beautiful. They're some kind of archaic dictionaries, right, from yeah. 50, 100 years ago. Um, or so longer, yeah. Or longer, yeah. So they have a, a nice little poetic sense built into them already. Um, so again, something else to look forward to. But you wanted to start off with a poem called Running. Yeah, yeah Running. I'm, and I was mostly moved to, to um, <clears throat> start off with this poem because because of the weather that we've been having. Mm -hmm. This right. is actually about moss, um, and it's in, in, in all this foggy, rainy weather, it just becomes so brilliant and, and vibrant, mm -hmm. and I just love observing it. And I also love, a lot of my poems do call on the natural world, and I just love what the microscopic can teach us, mm -hmm. um, and what it kind of, how it inspires and, mm -hmm. and um, makes connections okay. for us. So this is called Running. The way algae slipped into moss, the first stitch on earth, rhizoids running along rocks, through bogs. It's a lie that moss hems only the north side of trees. Moss knots anywhere without roots, without seeds. 
When the sun runs too hot, moss can almost stop, wait for water. We could not. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's, it's, a, it's a shortish poem on the page. It's a really deep and complex poem as you read it. I'm also interested in that while it's very poetic, it's obviously relying on some scientific information yeah, to keep and, it going. And in fact, I, um, I, I think I have a note in the back saying that I got information on an online site about mm -hmm. moss. You know, there's such fabulous information online, Thank and it makes it internet, yes, yeah. it makes it very easy for us. And so, um, I did mm -hmm. do some do and, some and work. What, and was that? Prior to the inspiration for the poem, or just no, that was of, after. Yeah, you thought, after. okay, and then I'm going to look and make sure that I've yeah. got everything right. Yeah, because yeah. I'm because I was also um, interested in lichen, because um, mm -hmm. again, for all the same reasons, yeah. and it's so uh, lichen is just very prevalent here, much more so than mm -hmm. moss, uh -huh. um, and I just love it on the old stones and. I mean, as a child, I used to love to hang out in cemeteries. And you're from New back England, east, yeah. yeah. Right. And so the cemeteries there are just so rich right. in history, and all the those slate stones, and it, they're just covered. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I just always found it very beautiful. Well, you preface with that poem by talking about how important the microscopic is. Why? Why is that? What well, is I think it's about. Um, our ability to observe. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to look out on a landscape and say, oh, isn't that the sun beautiful on the right. hill or the green, like what we have now when we look up at the hills, mm -hmm. the, the green lush hills after all this rain. But I think we seldom just kind of hunker down in the mm -hmm. yard and just look at the dirt and see what, <laughs> see what comes up. You know, there's, there's going to be something, right. a little bug or something. It's just all this world that's teeming that we don't see on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. And you don't have to go out to a national park or deep into the woods. You can just go in your right. backyard. So if we went to your backyard, would we see you hunched over with You the might. <laughs> you might. You might. I mean, we have... Um, we have, don't have very much land, um, but my husband has packed it chock full with fruit trees, ah, okay. and um, and so we're very we have a compost pile and um, there's I mean, plenty of bugs to see. Plenty of bugs. I mean, I do enjoy dumping the compost and looking <laughs> what's happening in there. Um, so yeah, let's 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 move over to the erasures. <laughs> sure. um, and there's obviously a kind of connection of, I mean, if you're looking really closely at a dictionary definition, yeah. you're looking at the microscopic, and I mean, I'm always fascinated by the process of getting rid of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me why that appealed to you. Um, I first heard about erasure, I listened to a podcast, and I, I think it was probably from the Poetry Foundation, and they talked about some people who had erased novels, mm -hmm. um, like Heart of Darkness, mm -hmm. and a Jane Austen novel, and um, and then that they also turned me on to Mary Rufo, mm -hmm. uh, a little white shadow, where she had taken a Victorian novel and erased it. And I just thought, how brilliant! And also, in in the case of Mary Rufo, you see the original page and the book and the whiteout that she used. Mm. So it's a piece of art. It, it's like. Um, the humament, or I, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, where you actually, it becomes a piece of art mm -hmm. also. Um, I think erasure is maybe a, 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 almost a misnomer, because for me, it's more mm -hmm. like you're revealing something. Mm -hmm. You're taking a text, a structured text. In my case, I took dictionary definitions from, predominantly from dictionaries from 1913 or 1828, okay. which you, I was able to get online, and, but they're no longer there mm. anymore, which is very no sad. perfect erasure. <laughs> right, right. Um, and so you, so it's, I think it, it's, it reveals, it reveals something else in the text that the eraser sees. Mm -hmm. And I think, you could take the same text That's and erase right. it yeah, completely it seems differently. As though, and, and you might come back later on to the same word and have a different erasure. Exactly, yeah. which I think is very exciting about right. it. So, and that's a, a, a kind of creation or recreation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, in a way, it's kind of like when you take that text 
it's like that's your form, mm -hmm. like that's your sonnet, that's your structure, and you're, you're, re, you're taking things away rather than mm -hmm. adding, mm -hmm. as you would with just a regular sonnet right. form. But it's a, it's a, it, it, to me, it's also a kind of form, I guess. Yeah. Well, let's um, let's let's okay. hear a few of those um, because I think people are going to be really interested and kind of wowed. Um, and the the dictionary has always been uh, something I have loved. I mean, as a child, I remember it was one of the. We actually didn't have many books in our house, but it was one of the few books that we had, and I I would just read it. Yeah. You know, it's just I loved it. Anyway, um, so this poem is called Tempest. A season, rush, furious drum, sometimes used as love. So could you hold that up to the camera? Yeah. Right? Just so, um, just if we camera? Can, yeah, yeah, if we can see, I don't know if we can zero in or not, but basically, there's a lot of white space here, and there's there's white space in between the words themselves. Is is that the same amount of white space as you would have if you just had literally put some white out on top of it, or have you kind of? Um, I I I attempted to make to to do that as much as I could. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, a little artistic license. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, obviously, it's not the same because, I, as I said, I was using. Off the internet. Off the internet. Okay. So when you print it, you just get a chunk. Sure. So sure. and so I tried to honor mm -hmm. the spaces, um, certainly the spaces between words and right. the spaces. Right. So and give it that sense of yeah space that mm -hmm. maybe something was erased or okay. or, or drawn out. Can yeah. we hear another one? Sure. Um, and I'll, I'll say as you're flipping through that these are kind of uh, used as markers between yes. sections in yeah. the book. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is the very uh, first poem in the book. It's called Storm. Snow, a heavy fall, sing cold, raise the walls. Mm. And the, the first, that's like the beginning poem, and the first section is very much about kind of want and desire and being alone, and there's a lot of winter poems mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> in it. Well, I can um, I almost hear um, the possibility for music in between oh, those yeah. lines. You know, I mean, the silence is, is one thing, but I could uh, I could imagine some instrumental music uh, weaving its way through. Absolutely. Um, uh, do you have one more? I'll like read to? one more. I'll read the one that the um, uh, the title of the book comes from. Sure. Rain. The descent. The water thus visible or call it mist, so fine as to be not, but to float. That's great. And they're just on the edge of not making sense, which right. is perfect, right. you know, for, right. this, for this form. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. Well, let's, let's, let's go back into some of the more traditional poems okay. in the book. Um, what would you like to read next? Um, I could read a longer poem called Lone Woman, which is, um, it's called The Lone Woman of San Nicholas Island, mm -hmm. 1853. All right, and very local uh, poem. Local, yeah. yes. And um, as, a ch as a child growing up on the East Coast, I, of course, read Scott O'Dell's book, Island of the Blue Dolphins, right. and saw the movie. And I had no idea that it was actually based on a real person. Oh. <laughs> And then when I moved here and I've discovered, oh my gosh, it's like local mm -hmm. right. lore, right. Um, I was just delighted um, and to learn about, about her story. Um, and this is kind of a, imagining a dialogue almost with her, okay. uh, sort of, or, or two internal dialogues, her dialogue and, or, or her monologue rather, and sort of mine or uh, some contemporary woman um, responding. responding. Okay. Lone Woman of San Nicholas Island, 1853. They came on a day too heavy for me to lift, and in my heart, birds. You remembered the word. Nach, you said, man. You never were arrowhead or spear, 
but every day of sky-wide necessity. From my kitchen, I see your island, 200 miles out in the channel, one woman alone, 18 years of shellfish, sea lions, small roots, sky. When I was a child, I read your story, wanted your skill with an arrow, your instinct to tame wild dogs, thrive. They came on a day I was skinning a seal. Toka, I said, pelt. Why not go with the traders? The hatchet was dull. Gulls nested and fled. My others gone long on a ship. With songs I told them of sinew, of buttons and shells, a child in my arms. What skulls for cups, what baskets of grass and wind sweep. Water drips down the walls of your cave. I brush crumbs from my granite counter, buff smudges from stainless steel. Would I trade? Your hands stiff, your braid gray. You do not talk of seal meat or skins, but of longing for someone to help carry, lift. The men sail you away. Seabirds wheel and dive in your wake. I dream you a new dress, billow and light at the thighs. No more days twined into basket and bone. My white man's wine makes me laugh. They say once ashore you sang songs of nonsense. Mm. Those people are just joining us. You're revisiting a violin of the blue dolphins yeah. that are really... <laughs> Fabulous new way. This is from your book, Call It Mist, and I'm talking to Mary Brown. Um, Mary, when I'm writing a poem, um, I, I'm always struck by how much is not in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, that, that really the, the <clears throat> essential task is to find those things to include. And there's, so I'm curious about that poem. Like, what did, how did you decide what to leave and what to leave out of this well known story, something that you've been carrying since childhood? Um, I was first, uh, there had been an article in uh, the LA Times, I think, revisiting yet oh. another something of her. And so that got me thinking about, uh, about living alone on this mm -hmm. island and comparing it kind of to my own life and mm -hmm. the fact that, um, you know, she was, for 18 years, she was self-sufficient on mm -hmm. this island. And then some traders discovered her and persuaded but, yeah. her to come back right. to the mainland with them. And I thought, what could have made her want to do that? Mm -hmm. And um, so I kind of, Invest, uh, yeah, 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 imagined yeah. that. And um, with this feeling also of sadness, because what happened to her was she got on the island mm -hmm. and no one could communicate with her, right. and um, she died from dysentery very right. quickly after right. with right. the food, right. yeah. um, um, which she apparently enjoyed very much, right. but still, I mean... Um, <laughs> well, and uh, there's a moment in there where the, the speaker is wiping the, the yeah. granite countertop. That's this a great connection, <laughs> uh, distant, but really somehow visceral, so uh, nice, nice job well, there. Thank you. <laughs> well, we have, yeah. we got about like, I don't know, eight or nine minutes left, so um, I want to hear more poems from you, but I'm going to sort of let you, and, and I want to leave okay. a few minutes at the end for the bean <laughs> poems, which I promised the viewers uh, at the beginning of the show, so um, what's next okay. from uh, um, Call It Miss? Why don't we look at a poem called Whenever You Stay, um, and this, uh, the only thing you might need to know about this is that um, there is a, a, a brief reference to um, a Russian superstition, which is that before you go on a, a trip of any kind, you, you, you just sit down and take a moment in your home. Whether it's like you sit down on your piece of luggage or whatever. They're always doing it in Chekhov plays. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I kind of referenced that. Okay. 
Whenever you stay, you are always leaving. I'll get the tea things. It's black today. They say it's a beast. And you, packed and pacing at the door before our sheets tick cold. No heart to sit as if in a Chekhov play before the split of travel. Never mind the kettle. I'm going back to bed. Tonight I'll opt for a one top at some starlit cafe. Have I lied about how slight, how lovely you are? Do leave the lights low. You might stumble, break as you go. Mm. Your voice is so precise and quiet but so intense. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 if people are just coming to your work for the first time, they might not get how much is wound up in, in these lines. <laughs> what, what, what is that? I mean, when you're writing a poem, are you someone who writes a lot of poems, or do you know, uh, I'm feeling this way, this is poem time? How, how, how's oh, that work no. I, um, I mean, occasionally I'll get that. Right, this I gotta is write poem a poem time. Right. Um, but no, it's very, um, I'm one of those people who feels like I've got to show up at my desk every day mm -hmm. and write something mm -hmm. because otherwise I won't write anything. Right, right. Um, I mean, you know, occasionally I do, I mean, obviously I began writing poetry because I had that urge sure, to write. Yeah, right. um, but I write so much that never goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do feel like it's something you've got to work at every day and you've got to, it's like, I, I call it doing my, my poetry bicep curls, right, you know, even right. if I just write two lines, it's still, there, it's yeah. important. Yeah. I, I feel the same way. And, and I think that's maybe something that people who don't write a lot of poetry might be surprised to know that, well, I bet you I write a lot more bad <laughs> stuff than you do, but that Oftentimes, that's a journey towards the good poem. Yes. You know, it's, it, there's a lot of mistakes, but you're realizing it's not this, it's not this, it's not this, it's kind of this, it's kind of this, and then, oh, it's actually this. Yeah, and I, I'm most often surprised um, by where a poem goes, because I, I might start with a feeling or start, you know, I think this poem is about this, but mm -hmm. no, it really ends up being about something else. Or it's just a poem of imagination. Right, um, right. I mean, I, I, I rely on my imagination a lot rather than, um, uh, you know, incident or right. historical mm -hmm. or something. Right, right. Um, we got about five minutes okay. left. Um, do we have time for one more short poem from there before we go to the beans, or should we go to let's the beans? Let's go to the beans, I All think. right. Let's, let's go right to the beans. And the, the beans came about, I mean, again, um, I was in a, I do this thing sometimes, which is a, a poem, a poem a day for a month. Right. It's a it's an online group that I do, and there's no critique. You just make the commitment to the ten other people mm -hmm. in your group to post something. To post it, yeah. Um, and so it was like you know day twenty five of the month or something. I'm like, oh, what now? Yeah. What now? And I happened to open the refrigerator and see a thing of chickpeas, and I thought, <laughs> I could write about chickpeas, even though they're not beans, but I thought, okay. So then I, I remembered um, going to a restaurant in San Francisco and being served something called cranberry beans, and I had never heard of cranberry beans. So I began to, again, look online okay. for heirloom beans, and all these beautiful pictures came up of mm -hmm. these just like, delightful color. They're like little gems, right. you know. So so anyway, I began to then, and they have all these fabulous names, so I began to write about various beans. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so this this first one is, is a bean called European soldier bean. Okay. And they're sort of red and white, and people thought they looked like little toy soldiers. Okay. <clears throat> European soldier bean. After you taught us how to plant, we stole your beans, named them after ourselves, then we took your land. We were hungry and afraid, soldiers of pure ivory dressed in dark red. 
Now we are fed, but still afraid. How can we lose our high houses on the hill with views all around? Mm, now that is a poem I never would have expected from a bean. I know. See, that's, that's the beauty of this kind of thing. Yeah. It just goes... Uh, well, I think we probably have time for one, one more um, bean poem. Okay. Um, uh, choose one for us. All right. Um, oh, and this is, this is a bean called uh, Ayacote Negro. Um, and it's sort of in the voice of the bean. Touch me. I could be your worry bead, bloodstone of being too beautiful to eat. Lay me along the fertile river. I am my own knight, inky runner. I was here before your ancestors. It's hard to resist this earth. It will conquer you. Hmm. Well, Mary, in, in the about a minute that we have left. Um, can you give a piece of advice to aspiring poets that you think? Um, other than what we were talking about in terms of write every day and, and even if, again, even if it's one line or two or just a metaphor, um, read is so important and allow when you read someone else's work that you truly love, allow yourself to write in that style. Um, it's just an experiment, and um, sometimes I actually copy the syntax of mm -hmm. other people's poems just to get out of my own um, proclivities in terms of certain structure and rhythm. Right. So, so people think, well, that's a, I'm, I'm just copying, but in fact, what you're doing is open yourself up to different ways of speaking, right? And, and yes. thinking and, and, yeah. and writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, I think that was a really great uh, piece of advice. I want to thank you again. I'm going to hold up your book one more time, Call It Mist. If people want to go over to Chaucer's yeah, Bookstore, Chaucer's they can, they can uh, buy it or they can go online. Um, thanks again, Mary. Thank you so much. This was a pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. The Creative Community is a co-production of CAPS Media and Ventura and SBTV. Here in Santa Barbara, the show is produced with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Robb Foundation. I'm your host, David Starkey, and we'll see you next time.